Thor is of course extremely strong, but today we are going to be talking about the many abilities of his weapon of choice, Mjolnir. For this video, I want to highlight the power of Mjolnir and also mention everything the hammer can do that the Leviathan Axe cannot. I want to thank Edgar and my YouTube channel members. Thank you all so much, I cannot do this without you. Please leave a like on this video and let's get right into it. So let's start with the hammer's mobility. In terms of mobility, all the Leviathan Axe can do is return to Kratos when Kratos calls to it. But the hammer can do way more than the axe can. The hammer and Thor are very close to one another and work together really well. Thor recalls the hammer to him with a snap of his finger, which we see multiple times throughout the game, while Kratos holds his hand out to call it. While he was drunk outside of the bar, in that area he does recall the hammer with his open palm just like Kratos, but it seems like Thor has less control when he does. Now it could be it was because Thor is drunk and just had less control given his current state. But not only can Thor recall the hammer to him, he can push himself towards the hammer. We see this in a few places. We first see this when with Atreus. He throws the hammer up and chases after the hammer. And we see this more clearly during the Ragnarok fight. Thor pulls himself towards the hammer. I have no doubt in my mind Thor couldn't just simply jump up the cliff when he's with Atreus, but it seems Mjolnir pulled him up. Knowing this, when you go back to the very start of the game, during the very first encounter of Thor vs Kratos, Thor uppercuts Kratos by throwing the axe, and Thor zips up to the axe moments later. Very nice detail, Santa Monica. The hammer can for some reason be used while Thor is not even holding it or long after he threw it. We see this multiple times throughout the game. The very first time we see it is when Kratos is struggling against it even though Thor is not holding it. Again, when Kratos and Thor throw their weapons at each other, the axe is trying to move forward but because of Mjolnir applying pressure even in the air, we see the axe struggling against it. We also see it when Thor throws his hammer at Atreus. Somehow Thor can have the hammer apply pressure and keep its momentum far long after Thor threw it. And he can do this for as long as he wants, again as we see with Atreus. So far, he can recall the hammer, call himself to the hammer, apply pressure when thrown and apply pressure for as long as he wants, and he can also move the hammer wherever he wants when he recalls it. We see this when he blocks a strike by Kratos during the first fight. Hell, even if you pay close attention to the bar scene, you can actually see the sentient sword that belongs to Freyr. It can be seen fighting the hammer in mid-air as if the hammer has a mind of its own. Which is a very incredible and a very missable detail, so what the hell is happening here? I think that there is something more. We know that there is not a soul in the hammer, but perhaps the hammer bends to the will of its user, more specifically Thor. If it's thrown or recalled, the user can do exactly what that he wants the hammer to do. It's really odd the bond between Thor and his hammer and it might be a lot deeper than we realize. This is something Kratos himself might have actually noticed. If you go into Kratos' journal he says, The full force of his attacks is as heavy as any I have felt. The hammer, Mjolnir, only compounds his power, with each blow echoes with the death and destruction they have wrought together. It's clear that Mjolnir is not simply a tool for Thor, but maybe a companion as well. It's very odd, but let's move on. And moving on, we're going to start talking power. The giants described Mjolnir as a super weapon they were very worried about as its creation tipped the balance of power. Here is that clip. Well, this was when the long war was young, when victory was still a thing dreamed of, and the Jotnar might have tipped the balance between Aesir and Vanir. Odin had persuaded Tyr that the hammer was merely a deterrent, a means to broker peace from a position of strength. Tyr was hopeful to convince all parties they would prosper best through peace. He knew the giants were deeply concerned about the hammer, 
a super weapon in hands they when did not Faye trust. When Faye and Thor fought in Vanaheim, their weapons were so powerful and not only destroyed the entire area, creating the crater, but it seems their clash literally split the very souls of people nearby. Here is a spirit saying that and another clip of Atreus and Mimir talking about souls and how they split. Take a look. The day this family was destroyed, my spirit was torn, split in two. Souls come in four parts. Does that mean you can lose some of your soul, but not all of it? Aye. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Lose any one of them and the entire being suffers. Still, sometimes luck alone is enough. Just ask. Mjolnir is also so powerful, when Thor used it to strike the serpent, the serpent actually flung back in time. Now here is that clip of the actual game when this happens, and here is another clip of Mimir confirming this is what happened. There are still signs of the world serpent all over the lake, but we saw him disappear at Ragnarok. I could only mean the legend was true all along. That blow from Thor sent Jormungandr straight back in time. A younger Yorme, fresh from Jotunheim, would grow into the serpent we know. And of course, the hammer is so powerful, it actually did kill Kratos with a raw blow. Thor then used the hammer to resuscitate Kratos. Here is a clip of Eric William, Ragnarok's director, talking about this moment. Two different things that's going to death screen and all this kind of stuff. And then I, I kind of threatened it a little bit, and then somebody went in and just like, banged it all out and they were like check this out like in a monday and it was like they were like we can't get rid of this so they came just in to save the day this yeah. moment right i was just like we're it's finished when i Kojima say we're finished yeah. Yeah. yeah no and this is our homage like we love, love video games yeah you know what i mean and so where we can fit those things in and it worked in the mythology because there's also a part about this like a lot of people don't know but that mjolnir has, has this ability to bring these goats back to life and we were never going to show that because it's kind of weird and obscure, but we were like, we'll do a nod to it by him bringing Kratos back to life with the <laughs> hammer. So. To end this video, let's talk about Mjolnir and what it can do in combat and its minor attacks. The hammer can send a lightning wave towards its enemies. It can summon lightning to paralyze anyone that it hits, and it can be slammed on the ground, creating shockwave. And of course, it can hit objects hard. Really, really hard. But that's all I have for this video, and that's all I have about the hammer. If you like this video, to show some appreciation, please hit the like button. I really do appreciate it, as it helps this channel out in this video. Other than that, I'll see you all in the next God of War analysis, theory, whatever I decide to do. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm going to be out of here. Thank you guys and girls for listening. Deuces.